Hello everybody and welcome to Web Factory 2010. In this video tutorial we're going to talk about how to set up and configure the botnet connector in Web Factory 2010 Studio. Before going on, make sure that you have the Web Factory 2010 server and the Web Factory 2010 botnet service running inside the Web Factory service manager. I will also use a botnet simulator the DynaServe, which will simulate my botnet devices, objects and properties. So, here we are in our Web Factory Studio login window. I'm gonna open my test database and I'm gonna show you how to create the botnet connector and import devices and of course browse the connector for signals. Now, under the server you can see we have the Web Factory simulation connector. Now on the same server we're gonna want to add our botnet connector. Now to add the botnet connector we'll need to select our server, right click on it, select new connector and select botnet connector. Now as you can see the botnet connector that we have just created is added to our connector grid over here in the main view of the server. The botnet connector configuration panel, which is the panel from the lower side of the main view, allows us to customize our connector. The configuration panel is an overview of the connector and the devices attached. For now we have no devices, so our next step is to attach devices. Now the botnet connector configuration allows two methods of adding device to a connector create a new connector by using the new button from the menu or importing devices by clicking on the import button on the connector configuration menu bar. Now in most of the cases we're gonna want to import the devices from our network probably. So I'm gonna click the import button and we're gonna search for devices and after the search is complete and our devices are found we're gonna see this window, the Import Botnet Device Properties window. Now, this window allows us to select either a whole botnet device with all its properties or we can select properties from the device. For this example I'm gonna select my DynaServe botnet device which is a simulation device and I'm gonna click Import. We can see that we have our device imported in our connector configuration panel and on the left side we can see we have a tree menu which allows us to browse through our device and we can see each property for each device we have over here. Now you can see that our device is listed under the property grid and if we select the botnet connector we're gonna see the device inside of our connector configuration main view. The first property from this grid is the instance and any device must have this unique instance number. The name on the other side of course is compulsory but it doesn't have to be unique. The poll period is the period of time between interrogations. The RPM support means the read property multiple is supported because this checkbox is marked. Now, in this way, several property values can be read in the RPM, so the read property multiple query. The change of values notification is supported if this checkbox is checked. The confirmed change of values notification is more immune to loss of package that's the change of value notification over here, so we can check this too. The COVP means the change of property values and this can be supported or not also. The change of value synchronization is supported if the, the checkbox is marked. And the right priority is our last property from our property grid. Now this sets the level of priority for a commandable property. Write operations to an object property has a priority attribute. Now in this way a device resolves the conflict when several botnet clients write different values to a property and we can select over here the level of priority that we want our device to have. Now, when selecting the botnet connector like we have over here in the navigation tree on the left side panel, the botnet device properties 
So all these properties we have talked about are displayed in this main view of the connector configuration. When selecting the botnet device, the instance name and type of the botnet objects are listed in the right panel of the, of the configuration window over here. And of course, if we select a botnet object, the name, the type, the read, the writable and the cov support will be listed in our property grid. Now, the whole purpose of using the botnet connector in Web Factory Studio is being able to add signals from the botnet connector. So, once we have our botnet device loaded into our connector, we're going to save the configuration and we will want to browse our connector. So, we're going to click our connector and right click on it and select browse connector. And here is our browse connector window. Now, we can see in each of our botnet devices we have list of properties. Now we can either select all these properties we want to import or we can invert our selection which can mean deselect or select what is not selected. For example, in this case I can invert the selection and what was previously unselected it is now selected. So we can select what properties we want from here or we can select to browse all sub items and this way we're gonna see all the properties we can import in one single view. So I'm gonna select all our properties and I'm gonna click add and as you can see we have an error that states please enter a group name. Now the destination group can be either created over here by actually typing the name of the group in this text field or can be created manually under the connector. So we can either right click the connector and select new group or we can browse the connector and inside our browser we can select all and, and create the destination group over here. Of course using this drop down menu we can select the group that we have already created and I'm gonna do this from the, for the time being. So if we're gonna click add and close you can see that we have all our botnet signals imported in our botnet group. Now the botnet signals are no different than other signals in Web Factory Studio and this is the way you can achieve a complete botnet configuration when importing a device. But of course we can also create a new device from scratch so I'm gonna select the new button from the menu. And as you can see we have a new device created and this device has by default an instance number and no name. And I'm gonna put a name over here just for the tutorial's sake. And in this device I'm gonna create a new accumulator. And the, inside this accumulator I'm gonna create some properties and as you can see I can select the properties I can introduce in my accumulator. And I'm gonna just make a random selection and click OK. And as you can see we have the properties listed. So just like when importing the device we can we have the device, we have the accumulators and we have the properties for both imported or created devices. This is everything about botnet connector setup in Web Factory Studio. I'm gonna see you next time when we're gonna talk about more interesting stuff in Web Factory 2010. So see you soon.